Welcome to another edition of Transparency in Government. This is the program where people in the town of Londonderry can submit questions, ask their government representatives or what they're, what's going on in the town hall, issues that you see in the paper, things that you're concerned about, contact us, let us know what you want us to talk about, and we will do that. In the meantime, we're going to talk today with Kevin Smith, our town manager. Kevin has been on with us on a monthly basis, and each month he brings with us a guest from the town, one of the town departments. And today we have Kathy Blash, who is the Senior Affairs Director. And Kathy, I'd like to say welcome. I'm so glad that you were able to join us today. Well, thank you for having me. What does the Senior Affairs Director do? Wears many different hats. <laughs> um, I oversee the, the uh, programs at the center, which we have many programs. By programs, there. you mean? We have uh, various exercise programs, as well as art, hands-on, craft-type programs. Um, we offer lunches there three days a week. Uh, we also offer trips now. Mm -hmm. And um, we're getting a lot of seniors coming in just because they're hearing that trips are being run again. Yeah. What kind of trips do they uh, get to go on? Last year we did an Indian Head Resort trip for the fall foliage season. That's fun. And this year on October 9th we're going to the Mount Washington Hotel. Uh -huh. And I'm looking forward to that one. You do the flower show as did, well, right? Did the flower show back in the winter down in Boston. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. And uh, we've got a murder mystery trip October 30th. <coughs> but no one will be hurt. <laughs> no. No one will be murdered. Okay, good. Um, they may become the murderer. Oh, uh, well, uh, okay. It's one of those. Yes, it's participation. Uh. And there's room on the trip. And then um, in Chris, for cr the Christmas show, December 10th, there's one to Indian Head Resort for the Joy to the World mm -hmm. show there. They put on a great show up there. I've been I heard there that. I haven't times. been there, yeah. but I've heard that. Yeah, yeah, they do. They do. So now, Senior Affairs, it sounds like maybe you do more than just handle the fun stuff that goes on at the Senior Center. Oh, they do it's dancing there too, don't they? We Still have line, line dancing. dancing? Yes, yes okay. there's line yeah, dancing. What are some of the popular programs? Bone Builders is a, a very popular program. Mm -hmm. uh, and the group has gotten so large that unfortunately now we can't take any more participants in that oh, particular wow. program. And we need to send them elsewhere to another open facility. Mm -hmm. uh, but Zangevity is taking Zangevity off. Zangevity is really taking yeah. off. And that's only been about a month that we've had that going on Monday mornings. Mm -hmm. I've been going to that one. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And what is Zangevity? Want me to try that Why one? Why don't you try okay. that one? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, um, I had uh, the woman who created the program was on one of my other shows. Um, and she explained what she was doing. She's a senior expert mm -hmm. on uh, senior issues, whatever. And what she did was she saw that there was a need for people to do more than just sit in a nursing home kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So she started it there. And it's to create a mind-body balance. Some of the exercises that we do are for balance. Mm -hmm. Some of them she has you going, you know, that'll pat your head and rub your tummy thing. That takes a lot of brain power to do that. So there's a, that type of thing is in there. And it's, she makes it fun. Um, the the, tr the ex uh, instructor makes it a lot of fun by talking about the music that's playing. We throw balls around and try to catch them. Not so good at that. And it's really, um, it's a fun way to exercise. You do definitely get exercise, but you do it at your own pace. Mm -hmm. So when they all start walking around marching, I'm, I can't march right now with that boot on my foot. So I march in place in my chair, but we're all getting plenty of exercise mm -hmm. and it's a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. It's very casual and you just that's do great. as much as you can and want to do. Mm -hmm. So that's my spiel on longevity. <laughs> and Kathy, I know one of the most popular activities, of course, is the bingo. Yes. Oh, yeah. I've gone in there a couple of times when they're in the middle of a bingo game, and let me tell you. You didn't interrupt them. Uh, I it's made that mistake once. <laughs> I will never do that again. Serious business. Yes. <laughs> you talk about murder mystery. I almost became <laughs> the murder be <laughs> during that. Uh, but it's the, yeah. the programs they have is uh, it, it's such a wonderful the whole mm -hmm. program is wonderful to have in town um, mm -hmm. that we're able to offer our seniors in town this service. And uh, wh what are the age ranges, Kathy, would you say? We have seniors that are probably around 60 mm -hmm. up to 92 is our oldest, I believe. Yeah. 
Yeah. And you do crafts as well. I've been up mm -hmm. there when they've got crafts going yeah. on, and uh, you know, if, if pastel art. Can people find? Is there is the calendar online anywhere? Yes, if they go to the town website mm -hmm. and click on the senior affairs link, and then it will bring up the calendar as well as the newsletter each month. Mm -hmm. And the calendar has every single day the times listed for which activities are going on. Mm -hmm. And people do need to register for the activities, don't they? Or can they some of them just be walk in? Some you can just walk in. <coughs> some you need to register for. Okay. And it would say that somewhere. Uh, they can call the senior center mm -hmm. and get that information. Okay. And if I'm a resident of the community, how do I become a member of the senior center? Well, you have to be over 55. So okay. that excludes you right now. Oh, well. <laughs> In that case. Um, Moving on. <laughs> um, you would be, you'd come in and fill out an a, um, application for mm -hmm. $10 for the year. Yep. You would be joining Londonderry Senior Citizens Incorporated, mm -hmm. which is the name of the senior group that calls the center home. Mm -hmm. And that entitles you to discounted prices on special luncheons mm -hmm. that are held on Sundays um, and a discounted fee for programs. So uh, you'd pay $2 to do Pilates rather than 4 Great. It's a, it's a great deal for, your, for the money, yeah. for sure. Yeah, no, it Absolutely. certainly is. And it's, yeah. it, and it's not just about the programs that we have there. A lot of people come just to gather. Socialization. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big factor. Yeah. Um, they'll just come in, just mm -hmm. have coffee and talk. Mm -hmm. They might leave to go run an errand, and then they'll come yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a family up there. Yeah. Now, do you ever get involved if somebody has... Um, a uh, problem where they're trying to find a resource for something yes. in particular? Okay. Yes. I thought they, they did yeah. that sort of thing. Yes. And in mm -hmm. fact, Kathy had contacted uh, me last year when Fred Fuller was having the oil oh, yeah. issues yeah. and you had folks that uh, used him as, you know, their service mm -hmm. and that weren't getting it. Kathy would call me and, um, you know, see what we could do to try to get them mm -hmm. uh, that service. So. Yeah, on top of running the senior center, mm -hmm. Kathy's also troubleshooting a, resource a, a, too. Yeah, yes. a lot yeah. of those different issues. Yeah. Um, and it's more than, as, as Kathy alluded to, it's more than just the daily activities, you know, uh, when they go in for the programs mm -hmm. and have lunch mm -hmm. and everything. There's also the special lunches and dinners you guys do as well. Mm -hmm. There's one around Thanksgiving. The mm -hmm. firefighters put that on for yeah. the seniors. Mm -hmm. and we have at least 100 people wow. that sign up for that. Yeah, yeah, that's a great meal. It's, it's wonderful. Last year was the first time that I got to be there for mm -hmm. that. And what I really walked away with was the camaraderie of all of the firefighters and their families and the connection with the mm -hmm. seniors. And it was really, it was heartwarming to see and just to be there and experience yeah. it. It was wonderful. We do have some awesome firefighters. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we also do a St. Patrick's Day St. Patrick's Day lunch. Oh, I think he's trying to get a plug in here. What do you yeah, think? Well, <laughs> yeah. We had Kevin. This gentleman sings. Yes, and I had him for my entertainment last St. Patrick's Day. And the ladies are still talking about you. Well, you I, may do, an, I may do an encore performance they want next you year. To do we'll, that see. For sure. we'll see. We'll yeah. see. Yeah. No, your name <laughs> came up in discussion the other day. Mm -hmm. Well, and this morning uh, we also had another thing that uh, service that the center provides from time to time is um, they'll bring in a couple of the detectives from the oh, police department mm -hmm. to talk about scams going on that are targeting seniors, mm, yeah. uh, Medicaid scams, mm -hmm. Medicare, um, IRS. IRS um, you know, th th there's a whole gamut of them yeah. now, yeah. and uh, the the folks that come in just mm -hmm. do a terrific job yeah. in educating the seniors on that. Mm -hmm. So we actually did that this morning, had the breakfast okay. uh, up there as well. So. A little plug for the AARP on that issue of scams. Mm -hmm. You can go on the AARP website and you can go to a section where they'll actually tell you what scams are prevalent right now mm -hmm. and what you should do about them because tons of seniors have been affected by these things and lost money that they just can't recuperate. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. That's a good one. And Kathy's being very modest is uh, she? in talking about this, but I have to tell you that uh, Kathy uh, just is a top-notch director for the center, and 
I can't tell you how many times when I go up there and the seniors will comment to me, oh, mm -hmm. Kathy's doing such a fantastic job. That's we love good. her. And I always yeah. say to her, Kathy, how much are you paying these seniors <laughs> every time I come up here? You know, they, they're always putting in plugs for you. But um, she really does do a wonderful job. And uh, I think the community is very fortunate mm -hmm. um, to have Kathy as uh, the director of the center right now. And you can tell when you walk in the door, too, you get that feeling that everybody's very comfortable. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's important. No, it is. That's it important. Is. So. so. Um, anything coming up soon? We're looking uh, at October here. Yes, I'm just trying to think. Do we have a Halloween the, party? We, yes, and the okay. calendar will be coming out next week as well uh -huh. as the newsletter. Okay. And we will have a uh, potluck luncheon, <coughs> so people will need to sign up for that. Mm -hmm. um, and they are going to be encouraged to come in costume, and I have a prize for the best costume, and we will let everyone line up and you know, we'll do this over their heads and, okay, and see yeah, who gets the get biggest vote. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Well, you might need to do one down low like this because the best <laughs> costumes in my house are on my dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I think that's great. I think you're doing a great job. I've been in Thank there you. myself with this longevity that's gotten me in the door. I live right next door. You would think I would have been there every day. But um, I really appreciate what you're doing, and I know the other seniors do, too. Thank you. And they all seem very happy up there. They're very That's a happy. Good thing. They, yeah. they really are. That's a good thing. Hey. So now, are you keeping people happy? Well, I don't know. Yeah? It's a good question, Dottie. <laughs> I know you've got a lot of issues you want to go do. over. I do. Just before we get, get into those, one yep. other thing I want no to problem. say is, um, for a number of years now, an expansion to the Senior Center has been on the uh, town CIP. Yes. Um, uh, that's right, yes. List. And yeah. I know, Kathy, you wanted to say a, yeah. a couple of words about that. Um, so feel free to... <laughs> this is transparency in government. Okay, so <laughs> any council members that are watching, <laughs> Well, it's also please. planning board yes, members as well. Yes, planning board, anyone involved in the, in the CIP the process. Um, we, uh, we are very limited on space and our numbers are growing, the number of seniors is growing. And um, we need more room, we really do. We, we need a separate room where we could hold our arts and crafts and keep all the supplies in there. Yes. I've got one closet mm -hmm. where all the supplies are kept. Uh, we need a place where we can have a slop sink so they're not using the food prep sink to wash paint brushes. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we could use a little room for uh, clinics, mm -hmm. for the hearing clinic, the foot clinic, um, blood pressure clinic, because right now that's in a little entryway that was kind of transformed yeah. to be used as that, as well as a little mm -hmm. computer room and library room. We could use another exercise room where we could have a smaller group of an exercise class mm -hmm. uh, that can run simultaneously with one out in the big room. So right now I have to stagger programs mm -hmm. because of the space limitations. Now do you know, I know that they've been discussing you on the CIP and you got a not this year answer so far. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether that will re be revised or not. But um, along with that not this year, did they give you any idea of what year they were thinking of addressing this? I mean they will address it, I'm I hoping. I think it I think we got knocked mm -hmm. down to priority two, and I want to say fiscal year 17, 17, 18, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of items on the CIP. That's a oh, capital improvement are. project list. Right. If, if residents want to go on mm -hmm. to the um, planning uh, website, they can mm -hmm. see that list. And it's really based on a, a needs assessment, and the first thing you look at is uh, life and safety. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the improvements we did make to the existing senior center uh, last year is. Uh, the roof was in danger of caving in. Uh, and so we used money out of our expendable maintenance trust to fix that mm -hmm. roof. So the good news is that we have made improvements to the existing building. Uh, and so uh, life and safety is not mm -hmm. a danger, um, but it still remains something that's on the long-term right. uh, CIP yeah. list. Yeah. So. Well, I'm glad that you brought that up because that's definitely something that we want people to know mm -hmm. that it's up for discussion. Yes. So. Okay. All right. 
What would you like to talk about well, first? What, you, what would you like to talk well, about Well, I first? think that we should talk about workforce housing. Workforce seems housing. seems to be the really big hot button. <laughs> so there was an article, I think a pretty good article in the Londonary Times this week if uh, people want to get a kind of a more thorough update on it. Um, there's a number of, I guess the first thing is people wonder what is workforce housing? Mm -hmm. And to simplify it, what workforce housing means is that um, it's usually townhouse, condo, apartment style housing. Mm -hmm. uh, the rents uh, for that housing are capped uh, at a certain number that is set by HUD uh, for people that are working and earning uh, an income up to a certain level. Mm -hmm. in, in Londonderry, it's about $56,000. So the total household income, $56,000 you would then qualify, qualify. Okay. for the workforce housing mm -hmm. um, rent. That rent in London there is about $1,400. Wow. So it's it's called workforce affordable housing. Some people might say that's not very affordable when yeah. it's more than a mortgage, mm -hmm. but it's because of where we are in London Dairy and mm -hmm. they, they look at all different um, you know data and criteria in the region and that's yeah. how they come to that number. So, uh, and with that, uh, Londonderry does have a workforce housing ordinance allowing for it. There's no minimum amount uh, that you need to have. There's mm -hmm. no maximum amount that you need to have. Have we set an amount within our room? Um... We haven't at this time. Okay. We haven't set an amount. So what is already in the pipeline is you have two projects that have been approved. Mm -hmm. One is a townhouse project. Um, opposite Fieldstone Drive Mountain Home Estates mm -hmm. okay. in that area. It's mm -hmm. called NeighborWorks. Um, they're building 78 townhouses and those are all going to be 100% workforce housing okay. uh, projects. Um, the second um, project is off of um, Perkins Road near Exit 5. It's called Wallace Farm. Mm -hmm. uh, that's 240 garden style apartments, 50% of those or 120 will be workforce housing. Okay. That's what's been approved. There's two other projects that are um, still getting approval from ZBA right now. Mm -hmm. One is, the large one is off of uh, Stonehenge. That'd be 288 um, garden style uh, apartment condos. Wow. Um, half of which, half to 75% would be uh, workforce housing. And then the other project would be um, 96 townhouse styled um, townhouses mm -hmm. uh, on Hillside, which is off of London Dairy Road, right on the border of Derry. Um, and that would be also probably 50 to 75% workforce mm -hmm. housing. Wow. So that's. What do you What's in the get, pipeline? What do you get for fourteen hundred dollars? Are you looking at a two bedroom? One or two bedroom. A one or two bedroom yeah. for fourteen hundred. Yeah. So these aren't. Uh, there most likely won't be a lot of families uh, yeah. utilizing these. Um, so apartments not a or tremendous townhouses. impact, but an impact, but not a tremendous an impact, impact on the schools. But not a yeah, an yeah. impact, but not a tremendous impact because again, you're not having large families in mm -hmm. here. You're having young people mm -hmm. who, if, if you were to go on a real estate site today yeah. and look up rentals in Londonderry, there's hardly anything. Mm -hmm. There's no inventory for it. Yeah. So you get young people who maybe want to stay in town mm -hmm. uh, and they might be working elsewhere, but they still want to live in Londonderry. Mm -hmm. They'd be there. Um, you know, young married couples who don't have children yet. Yeah. So um, yeah, so that's, that's who it's looking mm -hmm. to attract. Okay. Yeah. I know that uh, Pauline Karen had come in and talked to the uh, town council yep. about the workforce housing and her um, suggestion I believe was let's take an inventory of what we have mm -hmm. to see whether or not we still need mm -hmm. more. And is that anything that the uh, town council is doing? Is there an inventory of any kind? But this is a lot of numbers on well, here. Well, essentially, I just <laughs> yeah, the, and the numbers I just gave is the inventory are the numbers. of workforce okay. housing. It's okay. those four projects, two approved, okay. two still in the pipeline. So there's nothing that's already out there that's already been built that qualifies. No, okay. no there isn't. Okay. Um, and so you know, and in terms of uh, what will the town do going forward, I think mm -hmm. you're going to start hearing those discussions now okay. that the town has provided. Um, uh, a, a number of workforce housing units, mm -hmm. or will be providing them. But in there the are no. Um, there, there are there no, no rules minimum. in the in the All, um, the only master rule plan. Is, the only rule is mm -hmm. state rule, state statute. Is you, you have, have to, to provide, provide it. for it. Okay. But again, there's no minimum requirement. Okay. There's no maximum amount. And it wasn't addressed in the master plan. No. Okay. No. Okay. The, the number of it wasn't mm -hmm. addressed in the master yeah. plan. Yeah. Yeah. Just that they had to be some. Right. Okay. Yep. 
Okay. Well, you guys going to do the inventory? That sounds like a lot of projects. You've got so many projects going. A lot of projects. Yeah. A lot of projects. Um, okay. I put my glasses on. Sure. My writing here. Okay. Um, the other thing that's in the news a lot lately is Exit 4A. We talked about it last time. Mm -hmm. But I saw that um, <coughs> Derry had turned the 4A project over to the New Hampshire DOT, mm -hmm. and you had recommended to the town council that we do the same. Right. Sounds like that probably is a good idea. Yeah, I think it is yeah. at this point. It had largely been in the hands of London Dairy and Dairy being managed yeah. by the two mm -hmm. towns. And, and who it, has the time? Well, <laughs> yeah, that and it make, it just makes sense at this point to turn it over to New Hampshire DOT for mm -hmm. a number of reasons. One is they've put it in their 10-year highway transportation plan. Okay. The reason they did that is to leverage state and federal funding mm -hmm. for the I-93 okay. widening. Yeah. Um, the only way they can leverage funds for 4A uh, is, is, to have it there. is to have them be the project manager mm -hmm. of it and not okay. the two towns doing it. Yeah. So Derry and Lon now London Derry have both sent similar mm -hmm. letters to New Hampshire DOT authorizing okay. them to take over the project. We're still obligated uh, to a $5 million uh, mm -hmm. contribution, right. which was passed by the voters back in 1992. That's, mm -hmm. you know, that's know. how far this yeah. project goes back, it's even crazy. before that, back in mm -hmm. the 80s. Yeah. Um, and we've already spent, I believe, about $1.75 million of mm -hmm. the $5 million on mostly engineering studies. So mm -hmm. um, we still have an obligation there, but beyond that, there is no further obligation. Okay. Uh, and it's up to the state to find the money. Now, you said they have a 10-year plan that they're going to plug this into. Do they give you any idea, like, where along that 10-year plan? Uh, they did a, a, um, a public meeting in Derry a couple of months ago where I believe they said 4A, as part of I-93 winding, mm -hmm. would come in around. Construction would start in, I believe they said 2019 or 2020. Okay. Uh, so we're looking, you know, three to five years out. Mm -hmm. um, of course, they've already now completed exit five. Mm -hmm. They're working on three. Three is a huge project that they're doing down in Winham. It certainly is. Uh, and four, <laughs> exit four is going to be a massive undertaking too because they're reconfiguring that bridge mm -hmm. on 102 over the highway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Reconfiguring the whole thing. I've always wondered why don't they just start at the beginning and I don't know. Go that's, north. <laughs> that's an engineering thing. I'm not sure what the reason is, but uh, yeah. Well, I was in Oregon several years ago, maybe like 20, I think, and it was really interesting because they do their <coughs> roads and they yep. start here and they just go straight up. And they also always have at least half of the road in completion. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, I think half, <laughs> some of it is an engineering. They aspect. probably don't have any and some people it, that we do either. Well, and some <laughs> of it is a funding aspect too. Yeah. You know, doing okay. exit five over isn't going to be quite as uh, labor intensive mm -hmm. as doing exit four mm -hmm. uh, over. So. I'll just be so glad when I don't see any more of those orange barrels. Yeah. <laughs> right. So that would be good. Okay. So this progress is being made, yes. and, and I like that. Um, okay. We have to talk about the licensing of the junkyards. Yes. So that I is I mean, usually that's like a the, spring thing, but right. it's going on and, and on he, here. And the reason why it has been discontinued to, uh, mm -hmm. the, the hearing now is going to be on um, uh, October 6th. Okay. And this is just for Murray's? This just for Murray's the junkyard. Just for Murray's junkyard. Yes. Licensed. Okay. And part of the reason it's been discontinued uh, and delayed as much as it has is because the town council is really doing their best effort to thoroughly examine all of this from soup to nuts from the time it began until current day. And maybe bring it to closure? Oh, and try to get some closure on it to say we've looked at what past councils have done, we've mm -hmm. looked at what past um, town attorneys have recommended with the current, and just getting to some kind of resolution mm -hmm. going forward yeah. so that every year we're not going through this. Yeah. Um, and so they're trying to take their time with it mm -hmm. and, and being deliberate in making sure that they've looked at this whole thing six ways to Sunday. So the hearing is scheduled for October 6th, and I think one way or the other, um, there'll mm -hmm. probably be resolution at that. Well, I know when um, we had... Um, Richard? The, yeah, yeah, I was going to go with his title, but yeah, when we had Richard on here from the uh, as building inspector mm -hmm. and had mentioned, my thought was, why can't we just make all of these 
follow the same rules? Why can't we get an ordinance in place and says, if you're a junkyard, you've got to be behind a fence. You've mm -hmm. got to keep it, you know, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. I s still think that's a good way to go. Might cut oh. down on the whole process. <laughs> oh. I'll let them know that. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Dottie says. <laughs> it's my, I think it'll work. <laughs> We get a lot of that, well, how come he's getting treated better than I am? Right. And it's not that at all. And I realize that Mari's is different mm -hmm. because Mari's has actually gone to court. Mm -hmm. And so it has yeah. different requirements. And I understand that. Um, you oh, and I should mention, too, if people want to read the documents related to there. it, if they go on the building webpage mm -hmm. on the town's website, mm -hmm. go into building, and there's a, a link there under all the additional links. It mm -hmm. says um, documents related to Mari's junkyard. They can go on and read all the different court uh, orders that have occurred. How many uh, hours do they need to set aside for this reading? Well, <laughs> that's up to them. <laughs> wow. But there's three different court um, stipulations rulings? and orders yeah. and rulings yeah. on okay. there that if people, like I said, if people mm -hmm. are interested in reading up on yeah. it, they're welcome to do that. And we've mentioned the town website a few times already mm -hmm. today. And I'd just like you to know that all the contact information that you'll need to get information on any of these topics will be at the end of the program. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to find out more on your own too. And if you come up with more questions, just ask. Okay, we had another interesting, um, you've, you're updating ordinances. Yes. Which I think is really a good idea, definitely needed to be updated. I thought it was interesting that one of the early on ones that you're doing was nepotism. Yes. So we do have uh, a nepotism ordinance now that was mm -hmm. passed uh, a couple of town council meetings ago. Um, we hadn't had one all this time. Mm -hmm. And what the ordinance does is it um, puts um, safeguards in the uh, hiring, discipline, mm -hmm. promotion process to ensure that there's fairness involved. Okay. Uh, it does not prevent a relative from working in town of another relative mm -hmm. or even within the same mm -hmm. department. But what it does say is that if, if you're in a department where you have a relative, you can't be supervising them, hiring them, uh, terminating mm -hmm. them, promoting mm -hmm. them, et cetera, right. uh, which is not something we had before. Mm -hmm. And given that we have a good, a good portion of our mm -hmm. town yeah. um, that has familiar relations, mm -hmm. either through blood or marriage, um, the council uh, felt it was a, a prudent thing to do to uh, enact that kind of mm -hmm. an ordinance. Now, how would you handle something, let's say that Kathy uh, has a distant cousin or something that comes along and she's just perfect for one of the programs at the senior center. Mm -hmm. She would not be in the position to do the hiring. Would that pass on to somebody else? It would. Yeah, okay. it would most likely pass along to the next highest Higher person okay. or we would appoint mm -hmm. someone in, uh, uh, on Kathy's behalf. And we're actually working, our HR department right now is working up the policies okay. to come up with the different processes mm -hmm. uh, yeah. if something Mm -hmm. like that were to occur in the future. Because yeah, I can certainly understand why you don't want the cronyism, that type mm -hmm. of thing going on. But on the other hand, how can you, with, with any, you know, good yeah, intent, I mean, there's, not allow someone qualified right. to apply for no, a job? No, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And you, and you want to find the balance mm -hmm. there. Um, you don't want to disqualify people just because they happen to be related right, yeah. somewhere along the way. But at the same time, it's really to in, ensure, as I said, mm -hmm. ensure fairness in the process mm -hmm. so that you know, it passes the straight face test and that people can look at and say, okay, that was yeah. a, a fair process. Yeah. You know, they it, they didn't have it in mm -hmm. it for it. Yeah, so. it wasn't a done deal. That's right. Okay, now that sounds good. Um, and we have, oh, I know, this is gonna be a big one. Musquash, October yes. 7th so is October the big 7th, meeting. Tuesday night, everyone that's interested in target shooting in the Musquash is welcome to come down. And where are you gonna have it? Is it gonna be in it's the- It's gonna be in the Moose Hill Chambers. It will, okay. Yeah. And it's it's going to be um, it's not going to be a debate, mm -hmm. but it will be a forum for okay. both sides to come in and voice their you know concerns. Mm -hmm. Are we going to have a yes mic and a no mic? I don't. I, Works. That's well. up to Chairman Dolan to decide that. I, he's I believe he's going to be moderating mm -hmm. it. But um, it's as I said, it's it's hopefully going to be a night where we can start perhaps coming up with some solutions. Mm -hmm. um, to the matter. It's such an emotional issue for people mm -hmm. and it's understandable that it would be. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any backup plan in case you get an overflow? Uh, not at this time, Dottie, but okay. certainly uh, if, you know, 
We'll look at that and see yeah. if we, we, we're going to need that. But um, I just know that when we have um, those kinds of forums, that people are in the hall, they're not as happy right. as if they're in no, the room. No, that's true. That's so, very true. But yeah. we'll, we'll Although we do, do have the best. monitors in the hall that yep. can show everything. And we'll do our best on. to be uh, as accommodating to yeah. people as possible, yeah. if, even if that means filtering people in and out of the mm -hmm. room as they've had their you know chance to say right. their piece. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, who's going to be there? Just the town council listening, or are you going to have other? I'll be members of the town like council, the... but again, it's it's open to anyone that wants okay. to come. Okay, so you haven't specifically said you want to have the conservation commission there. No, I'm sure there'll be members just of listen. conservation. Yeah. There may be members from mm -hmm. uh, fish and game. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, it's anybody who's got an interest in this okay. that again wants to come and and voice what their mm -hmm. opinions are. So you're are gathering it. information. It is. It's real it's an information gathering mm -hmm. session okay. for all of us. Okay. Yeah. But well, we don't expect to have a solution that evening. Um, but it's that's good. It's yeah. <laughs> you know uh, Yeah, because if you do have one that evening people will think that you had your mind made up and didn't listen. Well and something that <laughs> something that uh, Councillor Farrell says often is that uh, when we take things slow, mm -hmm. we usually do a good job of getting it right. You know, it's when we rush into things and make rash decisions mm -hmm. that we end up having to go back and say, yeah. we got to do this differently. So mm -hmm. um, I totally agree with him, especially in that position. Yeah. I you know in the school board, my when I was the chairman, it was we're going to take that under advisement. It just got brought up. Yep. We're going to take it under advisement, give us some information. We'll come back to it. Right. But yeah, you, you can't know everything that one night. Right. The pitfalls are out there somewhere. Exactly. So. Yep. So is there anything else that you wanted to I don't. We Make covered. Sure we, just, know? we just covered a lot there, Dottie. We did. You know, it's yeah. um, by the time this airs, uh, Mac Black Weekend will be over. But oh, I'm sporting yeah. my Lancer blue today uh -huh, and yeah. looking forward to yeah. the game tonight. Yeah. And hopefully, we'll finally beat Pinkerton after all these years. And some of you might remember um, that you did some sports commentary for us way back when. Yeah, I did, and I'm and still in a sports show. And, yeah, still yeah. doing the public address announcing for the football. How are you? I didn't know that. Twenty-one That's great. seasons, Dottie. That is great. So yeah, it should be a good game tonight. All right. Yes. I guess people have to come to the game. I will, they'll have to. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, is there anything else that you'd like to add? I would just love for more seniors to come into the center. Okay. <coughs> that sounds like just a good come plan in to for me. a cup of coffee. Great. And, and get yeah. to see us yeah. and get to meet new people. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Thank you, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kathy. And thank you all for watching. And again, if you have any questions, please get those questions to me or over to the London Area Access Center or to Kevin. And we'll make sure that we answer them on an upcoming program. All of the contact information for the town website and how to get in touch with Kathy, how to look at that master plan, Murray's uh, um, rulings from the court all of those things are on the website for the town and i think you'll be pleased to see that it is constantly updated i know i've been you, every time you go on the home page it looks different because there's more new information nothing outdated so i hope that you'll do that i also hope that some of you will step up and do your own program um, we're looking for juicers all the time we also need to have some camera people audio all director all of those things so it's a lot of fun doesn't cost you any money to participate and you can either be behind the camera or in front of the camera you choose if you're interested call the London Area Access Center contact information at the end of the show and again thank you very much I appreciate you watching thank you